I think that, um, you know, first of all, you know, I got to play better. It starts with me. You know, I got to find uh, ways to make some more plays out there for us, um, more touchdowns, um, you know, and, uh, and it's something that you, you continue to work for every day. You know, you focus on the little things, the fundamentals, the little things of the game. And, you know, I've been, been down before. doesn't mean that uh, we can't come out on the other end of it all. Somebody's got to win this game. I mean, it's, uh, it's been a lot of one-point scores between, uh, or not one point, but one-score games between uh, both of the clubs. You know, it's, it's, it speaks to, you know, they're a really good football team. I know everybody looks at records, but in the NFL, I believe that everybody's really, really good. And uh, somebody's going to have to make that final play uh, to be able to make it that, you know, who comes out on top. You know, typically Russell Wilson in a press conference is one cliche after another with a very positive, upbeat demeanor. Yesterday, it was one cliche after another with a very flat demeanor that is appropriate to the current state of the team. There was a weird disconnect there as the team was crashing and burning. Russell Wilson was still let's riding. I think he's realized he needs to modify his approach to where the team currently is. And the quote from Nathaniel Hackett that I don't think he meant it this way, but it becomes this standalone pullout quote. Somebody's got to win this game. Yes, somebody does have to win this game unless they tie two and seven Raiders, three and six Broncos. Take your pick. Which team, Chris, has been the bigger disappointment this season? It's a tough one. I- I'm going to go with the Broncos. And-, and I don't even really care about the records a whole lot. It's just the look. And specifically, wait, we I know we can get into, you know, Nathaniel Hackett, game one management and all that, and that certainly has not, you know, helped his case. And there's been a bad look there. And, of course, with the play clock stuff early in the year and all that. But more than anything, it's just the Russell Wilson. I mean, that's – that's. I mean, again, this is what he's been politicking for to the whole world about the last three years. Get me in a place where it's all about me and I'm going to show you that I'm Mahomes and Josh Allen. What? And they have weapons on offense. I mean, they, they're, it's not like you look at it and go, well, they just need to help him out and support. Like, he's got plenty to go there. It's, it's, been, it's, it's not been average. It's been bad, like bad. Where it's like, whoa, they're doing anything they can to survive in spite of him. And that's where that's crazy. And so that to me is the the more disappointing thing than than even the, the Raiders who, you know, of course have underperformed and blown some games. I agree with you. I think the reality with Russell Wilson is he he wanted something so badly, he never stopped to think that that might expose him. Right. He's been exposed this year Big time. as kind of a form over substance guy. A little bit of a fugazi, you may say. As as it relates to the idea that it's he's it really wasn't him in Seattle. He was more of an impediment to what the team was trying to do. The wristband thing for me crystallized it. Yeah. Chris. Yeah. And people are like, oh, who cares if he wears a wristband? Well, exactly. Who cares if he wears a wristband? Why the hell didn't he wear a wristband? What's this resistance to making it easier to get plays communicated to the quarterback when instead of spitting out all those words that to the average person make not a bit of sense and just say 27? Like, why, why, do you, why are you worried that someone might not perceive you as being a super genius because you happen to have a wristband? As I said last week, if it's good enough for Tom Brady, it's good enough for every quarterback in the NFL who That's has ever right. played or ever will play the game. So that, to me, is the most tangible thing we can point to to say this guy's so obsessed with how he's perceived. And we all know people like that. They're so obsessed with how they're perceived that it undermines what they're trying to to do yeah instead of focusing on doing the right thing taking care of all the things you need to do to understand how to properly master your craft you're spending so much time on the shell that everything under it doesn't get the appropriate attention and that's what we're seeing exposed in full view for everyone russell wilson form over substance i'm sorry i hate to say it but we're, we're coming to that conclusion as we see it play out week after week for the Broncos. And the the Seahawks did a hell of a job of hiding it to the point where the Broncos were willing to give up all that stuff to get him. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you're, you're right. And, and again, I mean, I, I think the, the Broncos are taking it on the chin and having to, you know, grin, you know, what do they, what do they say? Grin and Barrett? Grin and Barrett. Exactly. That's what I was trying to get to. Thank you very much there, friend. Yes. 
They are. I mean, I'm sure some of those coaches and players want to go, hey, listen, you, you want to know what's wrong here? Our quarterback's playing like shit. We're paying him $45 million, <laughs> and he's playing horrible. Like, that, that's what's wrong. The defense is legit. You know, again, the offense, Mike, you know me. I mean, I know I've got a little history with Nathaniel Hackett, but if I saw the offense and was like, oh, my gosh, it's so bad, they need to do more, I would say that. I don't hold back in that department. It's, it's, it's him, period. He is the number one issue with the Broncos right now, and that's where it's just disappointing. It's crazy. You know, it's again, I don't even care about the wins or losses. If they had this record and we were still seeing plays in the pass game and, you know, oh, they're putting points on the board and he's like, I'd, I'd go, hey, it's a lot of good things. I didn't expect them to just dominate football and make, you know, and win the AFC West this year. But, man, the future is bright. Right now I'm sitting here going, I don't know. Can he ever do it? I'm not sure he can. You know, and then that's, I mean, I think it's fair to question that right now. Real quickly, because yeah. I want to get on to some of these other games. Yeah. Between the Raiders and the Broncos, which team do you think will have more success the rest of the way? Mm. I, I'm going to stay, I'm going to go with the Raiders here. I am. I think the Raiders are going to kind of pull it together and gut it out and just, hey, Derek Carr, you say what you want. He is tough. Devontae Adams. McDaniels has been through some battles before. I'm I'm going to I'm going to go with them. I don't know if either one will be all that pretty, but if you gave me today one got an edge, I'll go Raiders. And again, for the Raiders, I think the issue is the reluctance to buy into the Patriot way. Even if Josh McDaniels isn't selling it as the Patriot way, he has become you can't be with Bill Belichick that long and not have your own natural way be heavily influenced by the Patriot way. We saw it with Matt Patricia. We see it whenever a coach leaves Bill Belichick. It's a culture shock for the team, and I think there's been issues with full and complete buy-in. We'll see if they get buy-in by the end of the year. Rams, Saints. My God, this is like the old days when they were both in the NFC West and they both sucked. Rams 3-6, and six, Saints 3-7. and seven. Buy or sell? The Saints are making the right call by sticking with Andy Dalton at quarterback. Uh, I mean, I'm going to sell that. I know. I am. I, I, I don't – again, it's, it's, it's just – all I've been sold on is Andy, we, Andy Dalton. We, you know, he just – he protects the ball a little bit better. And all he does is turn the ball over ever since they said that. I, I don't understand it. They keep saying it, and I keep watching going, wait, what you're saying is not what I'm watching. What are we talking about here? Let alone, he's not a guy that less, looks to make big plays or do anything like that. So, I don't know. I'm at the point of the year here where they're 3-7, and seven, and yeah, I think they should have made the change this week to go back to Jameis Winston. And again, use Taysom Hill more. He had three carries last week. And he had one pass. Use this guy. We have seen him go off this year when they use him. I'd love to know. There's got to be a book to be written on what the hell has happened with this management of Taysom Hill's career. This guy who's got special talents that never gets utilized the way that he could be or the way that he should be to the detriment of the best interest of the team. I don't get it because Andy Dalton, it's not like you're taking the ball out of Tom Brady's hands. You're taking the ball out of Andy Dalton's hands, and you're putting it in the hands of a guy who has proven he can give the team a kick in the ass. I'm not saying make him the starting quarterback, but hell, at this point, why not give it a shot? Nothing else is working. For the Rams, they won't have to worry about a backup this week. Matthew Stafford was a full participant in practice on Wednesday and is on track to return. Again, we don't know how guys are going to progress through the five stages of the post-concussion return-to-play protocol, but that's the indication. So it will be most likely Matthew Stafford for the Rams at the Saints in the Superdome on Sunday. Commanders, 5-5 five and five at the Texans, 1-7-1. and one. You know, earlier when I made the comment about the Texans saying, I, I think they could actually win this week. I forgot who they were playing. I'll admit that. I'll acknowledge that. Okay. I don't care about form over substance. Okay. I, I, I just like, because when I was going through the games yesterday, I, I, I may be inclined to pick the Texans because I could just see it happening because the Texans have been playing people tough enough that this is one of those planets line up moments where I could see them catch a team like the Commanders flat-footed who are feeling good about themselves after beating the Eagles on Monday Night Football. So, crystal ball, as it relates to the Commanders, since Taylor Heineke, We'll get the start this week at the Texans. Will Carson Wentz start another game this season for the Commanders? I say no. I, I mean, I, it, to me, it'll have to take, like, back-to-back -back 
horrible performances by a Taylor Heineke, something of that like nature there. Uh, but but you know I, I don't envision that happening. You know Taylor Heineke again. He's he's not perfect. He's not your franchise guy, but he does bring some grit to the table and some playmaking and. You know, for the most part, has done a very good job of taking care of the football other than that one interception against the Vikings two weeks ago. So I, I think it'll be him. You know, they got they got the mojo going. You just don't mess with that. And, you know, he's they're running the ball a little bit, and he's making a few plays, and he always makes a few little crazy plays here and there. So I say no, Mike. What about you? I think yes, especially if we factor in the possibility of Tandel Heineke being injured. But there's an opportunity to hit some roadblocks here. After the Texans, they got the Falcons. We talked about this yesterday. They got two, or the day before, two winnable games before they they fly into a window. Right. Giants by Giants, 49ers, Browns, Cowboys. At some point during that stretch to end the season, I think Heineke is going to hit enough of a rough spot that they're going to feel compelled to flip it over to Carson Wentz. I just, I just do. At some point, they're gonna, they're gonna ride this Heineke train until it runs out of coal, and then they'll go back to Carson Wentz. And maybe there's a chance that it won't. Hey, he's three and one as a starter. He's given the team a lift. Hey, great opportunity to, to avoid that is to not go to Houston, and lose to the Texans. Yeah, that would be a significant data point in whether or not Taylor Heineke falls off as the starter of the team. Now I'm talking myself out of thinking the Texans can beat them, but I, I really do. This is what this one to me that's kind of. It's pulsating, mm -hmm. upset alert. Yeah. I could see the Texans pulling this one off uh, just because I think the commanders are ripe to get upset after. that. That's going to be the challenge for Ron Rivera. Forget about Monday night. Let's focus on the task at hand. Next one, speaking of the guy who's the master of focusing on the task at hand, Bill Belichick, New England Patriots, coming off of their bye. They've got three difficult games coming up, 6-3 and three Jets, 8-1 and one Vikings, 6-3 and three Bills in a 12-day stretch starting Sunday at Foxborough. Scale of 1-10. to 10. What's your confidence in Zach Wilson for this game after that three interception performance against the Patriots in a 22 to 17 loss in week eight? Well, I, I, I think my confidence goes up a little bit just because of that performance to where I feel like, again, the fact that he's had to watch that game back all week and look at it and go, man, that was just like, you know, effing stupid what I was doing out there in that game will be good. And then the fact that he's got other games again to where, you know, what is he, 4-1, and 5-1 and one as a starter? And he he lived by the credo of don't make a mistake, throw the ball away. Oh, I'm about to get sacked. Let me get out of the pocket and avoid the sack, throw it away. He was great that way. You know, he's he's been a little bit of a, a game manager that makes like three or four wow throws a game. That's what they're asking of Zach Wilson right now. And I think he gets back to that this week. I, you know, again, it, 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 this is a very close football game for sure. But the Jets are not, like, going to be outclassed by the New England Patriots here. I, I would expect this game to be close as long as he doesn't throw, you know, two of the dumber interceptions. Or, you know, he threw three last time, but two of them were, were really dumb and uh, one you can live with. It has to burn Bill Belichick's ass that he's in last place in the AFC East. It has to. And two weeks to get ready for this game. And after they did what they did to him in week eight, and then you look at what they did to the Colts in week nine, that defense has really found its rhythm. It's found its groove. And it's it's forcing the opponents to do dumb things like that right there. So it's it's going to be – I'll, I'll, I'll say seven just because it's the Patriots – I agree with you. There's a certain value in the hair of the dog that bit you and right. getting on the horse that just threw you off. But still, that dog bit you. That horse threw you off. You're going to have to come up with something else if you want to figure out how to beat them. And you're going to their place. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, it's, I'm it's, about a seven I, I, with I you. I'm a seven with you as well. I don't think I gave a number. I'm with you there. I believe in the Jets, but I don't necessarily believe in the Jets against the Patriots. The last time the Jets beat the Patriots, week 16 of the 20. 15 season god amazing amazing but uh but right now hey look the future's bright for the jets and they've done some great things this year they were one of the three teams that i looked at in the afc as saying no chance jaguars texans jets and the jets are proving me wrong the other two are proving me right so thank you <laughs> thank you for not making me look like an idiot jaguars and texans but the jets have really turned it around it all started with that that game against the browns it's a different feeling different vibe and uh, a level of confidence that just kind of grows and grows and grows yeah. all right
Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.